Hey guys, it's Hunter. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome back to another behind the scenes unboxing video thing content, endless boxes in the kitchen, the series. Anyways, uh, just like giving you guys a look behind the camera and uh, a little sneak peek into what's coming up on the channel. If you go on to enjoy the video, f that like button up and let's jump into it. Alright, so we got some boxes here in the kitchen. As usual, nothing really changes around here. Alright, first box, we gotta pick one. There's this sketchy looking styrofoam sarcophagus thing. But nah, today I think I want to start with this big box because I'm pretty sure I know what's in here and I've been pretty excited to check them out. So let's start with the big box and move from there. Yeah, so a little bit of misdirection there, even though the big box said Epiphone. We're actually gonna be checking out a brand that I've given a lot of harsh but fair criticism to. But when it comes down to it, like the only Kramer I've actually had on the channel, I genuinely enjoyed. So Kramer had been gracious enough to send over a couple models for us to check out together. Gonna make a review video and then we're gonna be giving one away. I guess right now is as good a time as any to plug the channel, subscribe if you don't wanna miss the giveaway. But in the meantime, Time we gotta open these boxes. I'm digging the one on the left. Alright, first we gotta talk about the Kramer gig bag here. I hope you can see that. That's not yellow, that's like gold stitching. That's dope. With Kramer, credit where credit is due. They know they're a bit extra and they really go for it. Case in point, <laughs> look at this thing. This design is crazy, man. So this is a Kramer 84. This is like part of their graphic series. This pattern is the illusionist because of this like crazy optical illusion pattern where this middle bit looks like it's 3D and sticking out. But nope, it's just all flat gloss. I believe the 84 is famous because Eddie Van Halen, when he played Kramer's, he played in 1984. I could be wrong because I'm poorly educated when it comes to 80s music, but presumably that's why we've got a D-Tuna here with the non-recessed Floyd. And I also kind of love non-recessed Floyds. Like, full floating is fun, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to set up, especially when, you know, you just want to get to work and you don't want to mess around with it. But something like this, where it only goes down, it's much easier to deal with quickly, and you get all the dive-bombing fun, so I mean, yes. Yeah, you can see the little EBH logo here, and I've been meaning to try one of these out. Like, I've never tried a D-Tuna, and that may have something to do with my general aversion to Floyd Roses, but no, I love the idea behind it, and I'm really curious to see how it actually works in person. This massive headstock is so ridiculous. Got a locking nut. I believe this is a 14-inch radius, just like the Jersey Star I tried, so that makes it far flatter than a traditional Strat, and great for shreds. Direct-mounted Seymour Duncan JB, single volume knob, and that's it. No additional bullshit required. Pretty cool truss rod adjustment system down here. It's exposed so you can just like shove the allen key down there and adjust it. Kind of like spoke wheel without the spoke wheel, I guess. Routing isn't the cleanest here or here, but you know what? That's not a huge deal, I guess. Actually, nah, that's fairly ugly. What is this, like an 899 guitar? That should be better. Pretty disappointing, but that's really the only fit and finish thing that I can find on this guitar, so we move. Fretwork seems very nice, no sharp ends. Kinda loving how big they are, too. Onto the back, that's a cool little neck plate. Kramer 1984. And yes, this is one of my favorite things about the Jersey Star. I love how they've got this little I don't know, Allen Key Garage on the back of the headstock. Yeah, I don't know what you call that, so we're going with Allen Key Garage for now because it's where you park them. But basically, it's just a great way to have your tools available when you need to do any neck adjustments or adjust the Floyd. It's such a stupid, minor inconvenience when you need to adjust the neck on one of your guitars, and the Allen Key is just in another room. It's only about like a 30 second walk, but still it's much more convenient to just have it on the guitar at all times. Like in general, floored or not, this should just be a standard thing. Damn though. I mean, this guitar is just unapologetically 80s. And you know what? Say what you will. 
and I do. Seems like a lot of time that Kramer is stuck in the past, although I have heard that they're working on modern models with that Kramer identity, but you just have to respect how much they lean into their heritage. So ridiculous, like totally not a guitar I would normally have on the channel, but I mean that is just a lot of fun. All right, one last look at the Illusionist. I guess a close-up of the pattern would make more sense, right? <laughs> so dope. Very, very cool. Very, very 80s. And uh, let's see what's in the other box now. All right, next box. Ready to unleash some more 80s power. Let's go. Bro. <laughs> Guy Fieri intensifies his fuck. <laughs> wow. Yo, this is like a Hot Wheels car in guitar form. In fact, from what I remember, I think that might actually be the inspiration for this finish. So you got this like blue sparkle and then, uh, I don't know, can you guys see this like flame pattern going on here? <laughs> I don't know. Tell me if you can see it in the comments. Pretty subtle. So the other one was an 84. This is a Kramer Beretta. Again, I'm not too familiar with Kramers and uh, apparently I didn't do my research too well either. <laughs> my bad. But from just what I'm noticing so far, the headstock isn't nearly as massive. And then the pickup is, I mean, obviously you've got a pickup ring. It's not direct mounted and it's also angled. So I don't know if this then has like a smaller neck width. It might, or that might just be my imagination. The frets are still the same massive size though, which is good. And the fretwork is also good. Oh, I forgot to check. Can you split the pickup? Yes! <laughs> Let's go. They've also not done the easy access truss rod adjustment system. Good, so there's nothing getting in the way of this massive flame pattern. I'm making fun of it because it is so ridiculous, but I actually, like, I don't know. I kind of like it. I loved playing with Hot Wheels cars as a kid, like setting up the loop-de-loop -loop tracks and everything. And I mean, Kramer plays on that nostalgia thing hard. And they, they got me with this one. <laughs> Obviously, it's a Seymour Duncan pickup. I think it's also a JB, but I'll have to double check. Dude, look at that metallic spark. Let me see if I can get it with my big ass light reflecting off of it. Like my phone is doing a pretty good job of picking it up, but in real life, it is bright. Again, non-recessed Floyd, I believe this this is the Floyd 1000. That's a Korean made one. It's good quality, no complaints. And then you've got, again, EVHD tuna. <laughs> Man, I thought the other one was ridiculous. Nah, this is just taking it to a whole new level. Uh, it doesn't say Beretta on the neck plate. And that's okay, it's still a Kramer. And it's got the tool garage, nice. Dude, honestly, I was so prepared to just like write this off as super cheesy. And I mean, yeah, I, I guess the flame is pretty cringe. It's like not only flames, but you got a little bit like tribal stuff going on down here. So much Chad energy, but it's just so fun. You can't hate it. Or if you do hate it, then that means you hate fun. And I don't know what to tell you at that point. I think I said it before, this is kind of like the limp biscuit of guitar finishes. It's fun, but stupid, but fun. So freaking ridiculous. Like everything in my brain is telling me that I should be cringing hard. But man, I loved Hot Wheels. This is just hitting me right in the nostalgia balls. Well done, Kramer. You completely made me eat crow on this one. All right, one last look at this gloriously chad-tastic guitar. It's gonna be a ridiculous demo video. All right. Let's move on. And again, though, like, I have to say, when it comes to Kramer, yeah, sometimes I give them a lot of crap for only doing, like, the nostalgia thing exclusively, but everything about them, the finishes, the specs, even down to the packaging, made to rock hard. I mean, they know their brand. And speaking of rock hard, <laughs> no, I can't use that segue. Speaking of packaging, though, the sponsor of today's video, Native's new plastic-free deodorant with more sustainable packaging. So lately, I've been really mindful about changing my buying habits, really focusing on sustainability in my day-to-day -day life, right? Like, you and I as players of an instrument that's made mostly of wood, healthy environment and sustainability, that's pretty important. And as part of that, I've been trying to go plastic free whenever possible. So Native sent me this little care package with selections from their deodorant range made of familiar vegan ingredients like shea butter and coconut oil, aluminum free, paraben free. What's also amazing is Native is partnered with the 1% of the Planet organization and commits 1% of plastic free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits. So I've got Milk Latte, part of their new fall coffee house collection. Smells like working remote. <laughs> then Rosé, Lavender and Rose, and Aloe and Green Tea, which are all very fresh. Been using the last one daily 
daily for the past week dries quickly. It's not sticky, keeps me smelling good all day. I mean, it's just good deodorant. So if you want to smell great in a more environmentally sustainable way, check it out, link in the description. And best of all for you guys, when you use my link in code AGAFISH, they'll give you 25% off three plastic free deodorants. Get a discount, go sustainable, click in the link supports the channel. So thanks to Native for pushing sustainability and for sponsoring today's video. All right, next box. We could go for the sketchy sarcophagus, but I think we're gonna go for the little package up here first. Let's open it up. Rev stuff that looks so sick. Oh, wait a second, there's a note here. Hey, Hunter, thanks for checking out our new pedal. I'm pretty excited about it and hope you like it too. The details around our official release date are still being finalized. Have fun with it, but please hold off posting any content, videos, or photos. <laughs> Whoops. I'll be in touch with more details soon. Cheers, Derek. Well, uh, this is awkward, but uh, yeah, so Rev is doing some stuff, and uh, I guess I'll tell you more about it. Sometime. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, just joking. Apparently today is launch day. This is the new Rev pedal. It's the G8 or Rev Gate. Get it? Like gate because it's a it's a noise gate. You get it? Same form factor as their other pedals. Really solid metal construction. Crazy sparkle finish, which uh, apparently is a theme this video. Made in Canada, and mine is serial number 00018. So it's the 18th gate off the production line. And yeah, I'm gonna be using this a lot because uh, my trusty ISP decimator turned out to be not so trusty. It died and noise gates are really the only pedal I use besides the drop anyways, so this came just in time. The noise gate on my Rev Generator Mark III is really good. It's really responsive and transparent. They basically just bottled that up and put it into a really solid pedal. And the uh, geometry design is really cool. I wonder if they're gonna start doing that on their other G-Series pedals. So yeah, there you go. That's the new reveal. All right, last box, sketchy sarcophagus time. Let's go. Interesting. What, you guys thought we'd get through one video on this channel without a Les Paul type thing? <laughs> nope. So this is a 10S GF 7 string. I'm gonna guess it's like a 26 and a half inch scale length, 24 frets, ebony fingerboard. A lot of residue down here, but it seems to come right off. Tesla pickups, that's what we're using for Harley Bentons now, they're out of Korea. Weird tuning configuration. Usually for seven string single cuts, you'd have four on the top and then three on the bottom. No idea why they've done it this way. It looks kind of weird, but I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. This isn't too great, although in fairness, I guess the more expensive Kramer wasn't any better. Now compared to the GF Relics, I'm not as big a fan of the GF Moderns. Like the fingerboards aren't as well oiled. Uh, the fingerboard edges aren't rolled and I'm not sure why like on the relics they're so nicely rolled and it feels great so I guess it's something I'll end up doing myself because that would make it a much better feeling guitar in my opinion also interesting how the blocks haven't been enlarged even though the fingerboard is wider and okay before it starts sounding too negative because it's a bunch of stuff that I wouldn't have personally done let's talk about something they have done really well which is I mean the finish is awesome the figuring I mean up here it's burled over here, it's more like flamed and quilted. Nicely book matched too. I mean, look at that. And my phone is doing a horrible job of picking it up, but it's actually like quite, I don't know. It's got quite a lot of depth to it. It's very reflective underneath the finish. And it's interesting too, because this is like an open pore satin finish. So actually when you like rub your hand along it, there's a lot of like 3D geography going on with the top. That looks very, very nice. You can see more of what I'm talking about on the back. I mean, that is very, very, very cool. It's not quite black too. It's like a very, very deep purple. Zero, three, five intensifies. But yes, yeah, cool. So we got a little belly cutaway. We've got this kind of like ESP type 
neck joint um, and then we've got like a five piece neck going on here again with this kind of stealthy satin finish i'm gonna guess maple and wenge there's like actually quite a bit of flame figuring it's almost a shame they've done such a dark finish because it only pops out under certain light grover turner's the alignment on these are a little bit not straight yeah that's a little disappointing i, I don't know like attention to detail it makes a difference. Then again, it is quite an affordable seven string single cut guitar. It looks really, really cool. And it doesn't seem like there are any glaring quality issues. Just like a couple of little things that can be easily sorted. I don't think it'll take too much to get this to be a great playing guitar. One last little fly over here. And uh, yeah. I think we're done with the unboxing. So it's always fun to unbox guitar stuff with you guys. Some really surprising ones this time, and the review queue is kind of ridiculous at the moment, but I will try to get to these as soon as I can, especially that Hot Wheels guitar. Massive thanks to Vindicta Studios and the rest of the amazing patrons that make this and all the other content possible. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Let's stroke the ego of the algorithm gods together. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. All that stuff actually really helps out. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.